Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Uh, we, uh, we, we were back in Chicago for WrestleMania 22, you guys. Ooh, and Chicago does not like John Cena at all. I don't think they ever have. I don't know if they ever will, uh, especially one of their favorite guys was driving him to the ring. Um, just kidding. We'll get into that. Uh, but first, before I talk about uh, Mania, let's let's talk about this uh, this pre-show uh, interpromotional battle royal. That I, I love running down the names of the people in this because it's a blast from the past. Especially like they're they're low to mid carders, like people who aren't on the WrestleMania card. So uh, let's see. We got Simon Dean, Rob Conway, Funaki, Lance Cade, Stephen Richards, Matt Stryker, Super Crazy, Goldust, William Regal. Eugene, Trevor Murdoch, Psychosis, Joey Mercury, Johnny Nitro. I wonder if that guy will do anything there. Uh, Tyson Tomko, Road Warrior Animal, Snitsky. And uh, the winner was Viscera. Viscera. Probably because no one could throw him over the top rope. Hey, a, a, a battle roll over that where the big guy actually wins. That's, that's, nice, that's nice to hear. Uh, all right, so let's get into the actual card proper. Um... We open it up with a Raw Tag Team Championship match, which is fun because we haven't had uh, the last WrestleMania. We didn't have a tag title match at all, so it's good that we have it on here. Um, Carlito and Chris Masters are going for the Tag Team Championships, currently held by Big Show and Kane. Yeah, Big Show and Kane. Um, I forgot they were champions a while back during Raw. They actually held, a, held the titles for a pretty decent while, too. Uh, it's a fun match. It's pretty quick, though. Uh, the main thing here is that Carlito and Chris Masters keep kind of interfering with each other by accident. Uh, Carlito and Chris Masters, this team kind of started at New Year's Revolution back in January before this. Because I remember they teamed up inside the Elimination Chamber to take out everyone but John Cena. And then John Cena won, Edge cashed in, Radar Superstar, blah, 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 blah. You know where we go from there. But, um, yeah, it was a fun match. Big Show and Kane obviously get the win here. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, so, moving on, we get the second annual Money in the Bank ladder match. Oh, this it, this one's really weird because you got um, Shelton Benjamin, Ric Flair, of all people, Finley, Matt Hardy, uh, your current TNA world champion, Bobby Lashley, and Rob Van Dam. Uh, really fun match. Definitely not as long or as epic as the first one, I'd say. But, I mean, this is based, This one was Rob Van Dam missed WrestleMania last year, so he was really the only story going into this, I think, besides like Ric Flair looking to somehow get a 17th title run. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a pretty good match. Shelton has another one of his cool spots, as he's wont to do, uh, by springboarding to jump onto the ladder at one point. Like he flies in completely out of screen, and you don't see him. Uh, it's really cool. But RVD does get the win here, and I'm pretty sure we all know what happens with RVD once he cashes in. It's not going to be good for him. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, RVD second Money in the Bank ladder match winner. Awesome. I I kind of miss this being at WrestleMania. I like it being its own pay-per-view, too, but I kind of miss it being at WrestleMania. Uh, now, you'll notice we have a lot of matches on this card. No, there are only two matches that are past 15 minutes. So it's not like last year's WrestleMania at all, where every match was pretty lengthy. This this WrestleMania has 10 matches on it. So, you know, we're back to, to standard, like, um, WrestleMania match limit. But moving on, we have the U.S. Championship match, and it's um, Chris Benoit, the champion, going in against JBL. Uh, JBL, th see, this WrestleMania is kind of weird because Eddie Guerrero had just passed away. He gets inducted to the Hall of Fame um, the night before this WrestleMania. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, a, a lot of the SmackDown stories are focused around Eddie Guerrero. Like, JBL is saying that uh, he he was a good friend of Eddie, but he also beat Eddie, which means if he beats Chris Benoit, he's the greatest technical wrestler of all time. Like everyone's doing the Eddie Guerrero shimmy. Uh, JBL even tries doing a three amigos in the match, 
it, it's kind of a weird WrestleMania. It's kind of a weird one, I'm not going to lie. But um, JBL actually gets the win over Chris Benoit by cheating. So I think, you know, somewhere it, it's kind of like an Eddie Guerrero ish type of thing. Because it was a very Eddie like win, like grabbing the ropes for leverage and all stuff like that. It's very, very reminiscent of Eddie Guerrero. But um, moving on. Oh, this match. This match, I think, is. It might be my favorite on the card. Uh, it, I'm not sure, but it's it's definitely in contention for one of my favorites on the card. It's a hardcore match, y'all. And we have Mick Foley going up against the Rated R Superstar Edge with uh, with Lita by by his side. So this is this is peak Edge. We are at peak Edge, and it's very very exciting because I've I've missed seeing peak Edge as opposed to him being stuck in tag matches and feuds over shampoo. Uh, but this match is awesome. If you've never seen this match before, this match is really really good. Um, Starts off with Edge um, getting the upper hand, and then he he goes to spear Mick Foley, and Mick Foley had barbed wire wrapped around his torso, which you can kind of see. Mick, uh, he didn't really spread it out a little bit so you could see it, but but yeah, then Edge you know rips his shoulder open. But th- this match has everything. It's got thumbtacks, it's got barbed wire baseball bats. It has Mister Sacco getting barbed wire wrapped around him. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. And it has a little bit of fire, too. And by a little bit, I mean, oh, my God, that's a lot of fire. <laughs> yeah, uh, really, really fun match. Edge beats Mick Foley with a spear through a flaming table. Yeah, that you heard that correctly. Really fun match. Got to watch it. Got to go see it. I might watch it again, like, after this, because it's such a fun match. Uh, and Foley actually gets a pretty good WrestleMania moment here, like, when he's walking to the back, all because... Both these guys are, like, bloody and bruised and everything. But, yeah, it's really fun. Uh, so, before we get into this next match, we had a backstage segment with uh, Booker T. And this is the time when the Boogeyman was a thing. And Boogeyman's been stalking Booker T and Charmel because he has a handicap match with them tonight. And Charmel, is, Charmel just wants to leave. She just wants to leave WrestleMania because Booker T attracts all the freaks. And then you get Booker T interacting with... Ted DiBiase trying to make Eugene bounce a basketball. You get the pirate Paul Birchall swinging in. Um, you get Goldust dressed as Oprah. Snitsky giving Mae Young a foot job. Well, not not like just like licking her feet, which is disturbing. But yeah, it, it's it's a weird segment. It's really odd. Uh, and then we go right into the match. Booker T gets scared by his own pyro, which is pretty funny. But uh, it's very short. Bo- uh, Boogeyman is undefeated at this point, so he's not going to lose. Uh, he beats Booker T and Charmel pretty easily, actually. But yeah, it's kind of a cool. It's it's a good palate cleanser between the Edge and McFoley match and the next match we have coming up. But um, all right, so the next match we have coming up. I normally don't tell you guys to watch a match independently of the WWE Network. This match, I think I would because there, there was probably one of the most memorable moments that was it, that's cut out of the network version of this match. Um, for those guys who know WrestleMania, you know what I'm talking about. But if, if you don't, we're going to talk about it right now. It's the women's championship match. Uh, Trish Stratus is the, is the champion going up against her stalker, Mickey James. Now, uh, this was a really cool angle. I still say it's probably the best angle that they've done for women's wrestling. Um, Mickey is a, is an obsessed fan with Trish Stratus and it borders into like basic instinct psycho territory where like there's I'm not sure like I don't think it was ever really determined one way or the other if if it was an actual lesbian storyline or if it was just a true mind game thing by playing into the playing into that fact but it was probably the closest thing WWE has ever done to a lesbian storyline or at least halfway like because Mickey James was obsessed but Trish wasn't you know the whole video package leading up to this is really cool and um the match is really really good because Mickey James is fantastic 
she's she is dialed into this character. Trish Stratus is probably at her best wrestling right about now, which is good. Um, but there's there's one scene where Trish is going for a Stratus faction, and Mickey, uh, well, reaches down between Trish's legs to play more mind games and to and to get Trish to release the hold, and then and then. The camera really quick cuts to a shot of the crowd, but what you don't see is Mickey James, um, well, miming something to do with the Vader symbol and her tongue. But yeah, you have to see, you have to see this match in full on YouTube because it really it it plays into the story of the match. When they cut away on the network, it kind of distracts from what's going on because it it almost leads right to the finish of the match because Trish is so like in her head about what just happened that Mickey James hits a mick kick and gets the win and becomes your new women's champion. But yeah, this is a super fun match. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, just find as much stuff as you can about this storyline because this, this is the kind of storyline stuff I think WWE wishes they could go back to. Um, this is this was really this was a really good story. All right, uh, so moving on, we have the first ever casket match at a WrestleMania. With uh, Mark Henry going up against the Undertaker. Guess who wins? No, of course. The Undertaker wins. Of course he wins. It's a casket match, y'all. Um, it's a it's a fun match. It's, you know, Mark Henry's still in pretty good shape at this point. So he and Taker have a, have a nice match. Um, there's, a, there's one part where I think Mark Henry forgets he's in a casket match. And he hits the World's Strongest Slam and goes for a pin. And there's no referee out there. So that's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, Taker wins us. I mean, come on. It's a, ca- a, it's a casket match. Two, it's at WrestleMania. Of course he's going to win. But, yeah, not not necessarily one of Taker's best matches. But I believe he is at 14-0 and 0 now. So, you know, just just building those numbers up. I, I wonder if anyone's ever going to beat him. Someone will. Um, <laughs> so, moving on, we have... This is this is in contention from my favorite match of the night with the uh, Edge and McFoley match. It's Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon in a no holds barred match. All right, now before before I talk about this match, I want to talk about the Hall of Fame. Um, because this year, obviously, the year Eddie Guerrero um, was inducted because he had just passed away. And it's a shame. Um, if you've never seen that, prepare to cry like a lot because Chris Benoit, Rey Mysterio, and Chavo all induct him and they all just tell so many awesome stories of Eddie and Vicky accepts the um, the nomination to the Hall of Fame and it's so weird to see post pre-crisis Vicky Guerrero like this is Vicky before she became a character before she became one of the best heels in WWE like this is just a woman says she she lost her husband, and she's adorable. She's absolutely adorable. They they bring her out on stage. You know, it's 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 great. I mean, it's not great for the reasons, but it's great to see Vicky like get so much love from the WWE universe. Um, the other people, the other people inducted this year, Mean Gene Okerlund was inducted by Hulk Hogan. Sensational Sherry was inducted by Ted DiBiase. Vern Gagne was inducted by Greg Gagne. And Tony Atlas was inducted by S.D. Jones. So, uh, cool. Oh, wait. Hold on. Are you saying I'm missing someone? Maybe the headliner for 2006? Bret Hart was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2006. Now, now the last time we saw Bret, you know, I, I, Bret and I were cool. Bret and, Bret and I were, we, we were doing all right. We were okay. Um, Bret did not come out. For the um, the celebration of the Hall of Famers at WrestleMania, it was literally announced to the rest to the entire crowd, like Howard Fink, like uh, I mean Gene Okerlund or Howard Finkel, one of them. Bret Hart felt uncomfortable coming to the ring. What? And uh, I'm sorry. This is this is why I've never liked Bret Hart, like. Th- this is why I was always an Owen guy. Um, Brett is still bitter about 
the Montreal screw job. And I don't think, like some people will say it's about what happened to Owen. I don't think that's the case. I think that was a genuine accident and people realize that. But Bret Hart, still being bitter, won't come out to WrestleMania. In the in the same arena where he had the awesome submission match with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like it's it's a shame. And plus, especially if if Brett had like Alright, so let, let's get in, let's get into the Shawn Michaels and McMahon match because it's no holds barred, so you know there's gonna be a lot of interference, a lot of like beating like a lot of weapon shots and everything like that. And Sean is destroying Vince when this match starts. Um, by the way, Vince ha- looks way too tan. Like, really, really, really too tan. Like, he looks like he just spent three years in the Caribbean and didn't leave the sunlight. Um, it's especially relevant in the, relevant in the uh, pre-match segment he has where he and the McMahon family pray. It's very weird. It's very odd. But um, Sean's beating the crap out of Vince. And then the Spirit Squad run out, and... They take out Shawn Michaels. They hit the high spirits on him. And then, for some reason, they just leave. Not sure, but go figure. Uh, So then it becomes a little bit more back and forth. And what I would have loved is for Bret Hart to come down and for him and Shawn to fight off the spirit squad and for them to be the ones to take down Vince together. Like, that would have been such a cool moment. It would have been... The ultimate catharsis, I think. But, you know, apparently Brett didn't feel comfortable to show up at WrestleMania. Like, even so to the point where I was I was trying to read what happened with this and, you know, if there was anything actually going on or if it was just Brett being Brett. But apparently Sean didn't even stay to watch Brett get inducted at the Hall of Fame the night before. And I'm pretty sure that was more like a request or just wanted to make things less awkward. I don't know what it was, but yeah. So, um, a little weird. But, yeah, Shawn Michaels beats Vince McMahon very easily. Uh, Shane comes out to try and run interference. Shawn ends up inducting Shane into the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club, which, if you don't know what that is, don't Google it. You'll be frightened. Um, but it's pretty much, like, what it sounds like. And then Shawn handcuffs Shane to the bottom rope to make Shane watch the rest of the beating that uh, Sean was dishing out. By the way, JR is having a real difficult time getting the difference between Sean and Shane and McMahon and Michaels during this whole match. It's He slips up a whole lot. It's kind of funny to watch. But um, there, there's there's a fun point where Sean looks like he's about to deliver sweet chip music. They says, no, 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 not sweet chip music. So he, gra- so he pulls out a table. He pulls out a table. He has a ladder out. He puts Vince on the ladder. Sean, uh, he puts Vince on the table, climbs the ladder, and he's like, mm, no, 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 no. So he gets down, tosses out the small ladder, pulls out a huge ladder, and then puts Vince's head in a trash can, and then he drops the elbow from the top of the ladder. Um, after that, EMTs are like trying to get rid of Vince and everything, then Sean pushes them away, and then he gives sweet gym music, and it's it's great. It's a really fun match. I, I can't stress enough how, how really, really cool that match was. Um, all right, so moving on, we have the World Heavyweight Championship match, a triple threat. It's um, Randy Orton going up against the champion, Kurt Angle, going up against Rey Mysterio. Um, this was right before Orton got suspended, so he definitely isn't winning here. But, but Rey Mysterio, um, it kind of sucks that they... That in the lead up to this match, they call him a charity case because it's not that Ray doesn't deserve it. He obviously does. He's Ray Mysterio for Christ's sake. But it is right after Eddie passed away, so it is kind of a charity case type of thing. But the match is amazing. The match is really, really good. Like the story of this match is that Kurt gets Randy Orton and Ray Mysterio to tap at two different points in the match. But the other guy is running interference with the ref, so they don't see it. It's really, really cool. The story of this match is a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, Rey Mysterio gets a really good moment, gets to celebrate with Chavo, with Vicky. And uh, that's 
that's a good moment that hasn't been tainted yet, which is good. <laughs> and I don't think everyone will be tainted, but that that's a really fun moment getting to see them celebrate together. Um, so now, of course, we have the filler match between the two title matches, and this this is just weird. It's it's very odd. I think. This is kind of when, when we realize we're at the end of these kinds of matches. But it's a Playboy pillow fight. Tori Wilson against Candace Michelle. Um, Tori Wilson also brings her dog out to the ring, Chloe. And um, I don't know why I remember this, but Chloe has a finisher called the Tush Push, where Tori Wilson basically just rubs her dog's ass in someone's face. Which, I mean, I guess, you know, is only mildly insulting. Unless you have really bad allergies, then it can really change the dynamic of a match immediately. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. This this match is so weird. It, there's a bed in the ring. There's pillows. Uh, they they try and do some wrestling moves. God bless them. Uh, but they, they know what this is. It's Tori gets the win pretty easily. It, you know, I don't know. This was it's just an odd segment. It's just an odd segment. Go figure. But uh, now we get the main event. The main event, Triple H uh, going to try and take the WWE title from John Cena. And oh man, Chicago does not like John Cena. Um, these entrances, we have to talk about these entrances. Because the match, you can kind of guess what the match is. Not, I mean, it's Triple H and John Cena. They're both kind of... Almost exactly where they are now, too, except the reactions are different. But um, Triple H comes out, basically, they keep saying it's Conan. It clearly looks like Thor to me. He's even got a giant hammer. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a cool entrance. And then John Cena comes out to this mobster entrance where he fires, he has a Tommy gun with blanks in it and fires it. And uh, one of the gangsters driving the little mobster car is, of course, CM Punk. Uh, this is kind of like the infamous the, the infamous shot you'll always see of CM Punk's WrestleMania debut. Similar to DDP, accompanying a car to the ring. But yeah, I mean, they're in Chicago. Usually when you have stuff like this, they get local guys to do the stuff so that they don't have to get their own guys. But yeah, CM Punk, that's his WrestleMania debut. In fact, a lot of Triple H matches have younger guys um, and girls showing up. We'll get to that much later. But, yeah. Um, Triple H and Cena, they have a good match. It's your standard 20-minute Triple H WrestleMania match, though. Like, I'm not sure why Triple H insists he has to go 20 minutes for every match. I would have liked to see more with the Triple Threat match, which only goes, like, a little over 10 minutes. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and John Cena actually gets Triple H to tap out. So, Cena retains. He's got the spinner belt rocking. So, uh, yeah, uh, Chicago wasn't, didn't seem too happy with this. And this is the first time they, like, they actually acknowledge that Cena's getting booed. Which is interesting. Uh, because they don't do that with Roman Reigns, really. Like, they flat out said that Triple H would be the fan favorite tonight just because of the crowd here in Chicago. And that's like the whole thing is a lot of people... I can't believe already we're in Cena fatigue. I can't believe that. Like, that seems odd to me, especially because he just won the title the year before at WrestleMania, at WrestleMania 21. I think that's kind of odd that we're in Cena fatigue already, especially because he did... I think it was more that Edge wasn't the champion. That Cena was the champion. I think that I think that's really where this stems from, because Edge had a great run as the champion when he beat Cena using the Money in the Bank cash in. But I, th I think that's where a lot of the um, the hardships come in here for Cena. So it's not really necessarily Cena's fault. But um, yeah, so Cena gets to retain. One of very few guys to retain the t the title at WrestleMania. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for WrestleMania 22. Um, we're over two-thirds of the way done, you guys. Not too many more left. So, um, WrestleMania 23, I don't remember where it is. Um, I do know that it has maybe a certain um, 
political figure involved. And by that, of course, I mean Bobby Lashley. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I believe maybe it's in Detroit. I think Detroit sounds right. But uh, we'll see. Because next, I'm going to be going to WrestleMania 23. We're going to be watching that one again. Um, so if you have any comments about this WrestleMania, if you want to tell me off about my feelings on Bret Hart, go right ahead. You can hit me up at MadMike483 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in this YouTube feed. Uh, hit us up on Facebook at, um, at Mayhem Show on Twitter. And uh, hit up the hashtag MM for any thoughts you'd have on these uh, on this show. All right, so we'll see you guys back for WrestleMania 23. This has been 32 Manias with Mike.